Hi, thanks for calling. I know it's weird for somebody to reach out on Reddit to have you call into a streaming talk show. Um, so I appreciate your calling. Sure. Um, no, I didn't. I'm not the person who read your post and messaged you. That was our producer, Zaz. Uh, so I'm going into this blind. Feel free to tell me everything you want to tell me. Sure. Okay, absolutely. Whatever you're comfortable with. From like 20 miles per hour to like 100 miles per hour. Um, yeah, I, to give you just some context for this, um, fuck. So, like, <laughs> I had a dream with her that night about me cuddling with her. Like, sure. and that was, yeah. And, like, when I woke up the next morning, I had gotten, like, six hours of sleep, and I felt totally energized. Like, completely 100%, like, on par, ready to go. Okay. I sounds... wasn't expecting that. Yeah. Like, you know, it, it, and it was the only thing just on my mind that entire day. Like, that was just the ongoing source of dopamine in my head, essentially, right? Well, it's so, a big major life change, too. Like, something very important happened at that moment. Yeah. Yeah, so I you, mean... Your brain's okay, so reprogramming let me just go on itself. With the post. I, I kind of got off track here a little bit. No, no sorry, it's ahead, okay. Yeah, let but let me, let me just continue on with what I was saying. Because this sure. is about my... How I'm feeling with my boyfriend and our dynamics and everything with regards to that. Okay. So, um, yeah. It eventually got to a point where I was staring at my phone, hoping she would message me back, all day thinking about her, wanting to hang out with her, be around her. I eventually got around to asking her if she wanted to take things further, and she rejected me. And I was actually relieved that she did. Um, well, yeah, it was like answered. a weight was lifted off me. Yeah, because I wanted to be friends with her, right? So right. I was like, oh, I'm so happy. I can finally let this shit go. Right. Like, I was finally able to, like, turn that part of my brain off. But, anyways, um, like, soon after that, uh, I ended up going over to her house to get a DVD that I left there. And basically... Wait, we're going to have to explain um, to people what a DVD is. We have a lot of... No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I know I'm just, like, kind of ranting right now. No, no, no. Um, no. I, just, I just wanted to throw something in so you know I'm here. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Um, so basically, um, we went to go pick up the DVD from her house. She had schoolwork to do. And I was like, okay, yeah, we'll come back after you're done. And it came around that time, and I didn't really hear from her. She said she was going over to a friend's house, and the plans ended up falling through. She ended up bailing on me. And I was a little bit disappointed. So my boyfriend has been encouraging this this whole time. Uh, came up to me and said, oh, well, sorry, you're just stuck with me now. And that really pissed me off at the moment. Like, and I, I asked him about this later, and he said that he said it as a joke. Like, but I, mean, I was like... Let, let me jump in here real like quick. Has... He, he, I, in my mind, let me jump in real quick. I think in, in his mind, it was kind of a joke he's dealing with. There's some stress, there's some emotion... And he went with a line to hopefully just distract for a second. I think, you know, I understand that you were upset by it, but I also think he probably didn't at the very most think it would upset you, you know, um, that it was more innocent than trying to say, ha ha ha. Um, but it, I'm just, that, that's my instant reaction to that. No, see, for me, it came off as like a type of insecurity. And I know that's not the way he intended it, but when he said that, it kind of, really set me off. And honestly, I am not proud of um, how I reacted to that at all. So basically, okay. we ended up fighting. Um, I said a lot of stuff to him that was horrible. Like I called him a cuck. I said he was becoming less attractive Ow. to me. I berated him about how he could be so complacent with me catching feelings for someone else. And I also told him that I felt like I was trying to impress him the past week for feeling like I was neglecting him. And I wish he would do the same thing for me. So after this whole thing, he uh -huh. got super depressed. His confidence became shot and he started crying. 
and he's been kind of down about it for the last couple of days. Now, I really love him, and it makes me really sad to see how much I hurt him by what I said. And we also agreed that we should be completely monogamous for a while when we were fighting because of how emotionally exhausting this whole thing was. But I kind of regret saying that. I feel like I want to explore my feelings, and I really enjoyed the freedom of having to do, being able to do stuff with other girls. So now that that door has opened, it feels weird for me to shut it suddenly like this. I'm kind of emotionally conflicted, and I feel like it might be good of us to take a week just to re-examine our feelings and everything, and also think over how things are. But I'm also afraid that if we do this, we might not end up getting back together, just because it's a break, you know? That's not something to take lightly. So I'm not really sure what the right move is here. Okay. Um, I'm just going to give you my initial impressions here. The first is that uh, people who go on a break are either breaking up or not. Uh, a, a break is just short for breakup, right? If you're planning on getting back together in a week, it's not really a breakup either. So my advice is to just take a communication break. We're, I'm not necessarily going to go sleep with anybody. You aren't going to sleep with anybody else. We're just gonna we're gonna take a break and not argue for a week and think about what we want. And I would recommend that you actually don't sleep with anybody in this break and give yourself time to just absorb everything that's happened because you and he have just had some major changes in your life happen. And I'm also, you know, and we're going to go back to what, what that change might be. Maybe he does have a cuckold fantasy and you calling him that make him may have done a number of things to his psyche that he was found out that, you know, like I'm not positive on any of this, of course, but it, it, if he was, and you approached him like that, he might've feel ashamed of his kink. Versus you saying, are you into cuckolding? Because I get this feeling that maybe you liked the fact that I was with someone else and you were encouraging it and it felt like that you liked that role. You maybe want to be submissive to this thing. Um, yeah, I, 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 don't I think, think you need to talk about the, it. The problem here, like, I, I think I was just angry and I said that as like um, what a if pejorative. He is? What if, I don't know if you go through his, his porn with him, um, but... What if that is a fantasy of his and he's thought about it or something in the back of his mind? Just just keep in there. He might have a feeling about that sort of thing. But the one number one thing that I want to get to, whenever you enter a swinging, multi-partner, polygamous, any type of relationship that involves anybody else, you absolutely have to talk about it a lot first. You have to have rules. You have to have rules about how you're going to argue if things go bad when you can bring stuff up, there's a lot that goes into bringing a third person in. Two people getting along for any length of time is very difficult. Bringing a third person in and then trying to, to because things change quite a lot, you needed rules before this happened. And I think you guys kind of found somebody and he jumped on it and he wanted to see something happen. So he went without thinking and rules and you were really into it. And I think if you guys had sat down and talked and made plans about what's okay, is it okay for you to catch feelings? And do you both agree that's a good idea? Because then you're you're getting more into a poly relationship where there's a lot of research no, that you probably need to do. Here's the thing about that, though. He was encouraging me to be in that type of situation with her. Like, he literally said, How, like, what if you had a boyfriend and a girlfriend? And he was encouraging it the whole time along. Yeah, Honestly, it, I kind of think either that he was like hoping that it would end up in a threesome or that sure. um, he I can say could as a, get as... off on the fact that I was <laughs> making out with another girl and doing stuff with another girl in front of him. And, you know, I say all, a lot of guys have these fantasies. And the only thing that surprises me is not, hey, come over here and only do it in front of me. And these are, my, you know, our rules where I have to be there because a lot of swingers have that rule. It's same sex swapping uh, where they have to be in the room together. There's no going on dates with another guy or another woman. It is everybody's involved. It's in the same room. Um, that kind of surprises me, especially from from a, a male uh, who's encouraging this that he wouldn't have had thrown in a hey but you have to bring her over here if it's anything more than a kiss or like there wasn't something laid out like that um but no, i think I, that he was never also said anything about that yeah and you guys should have he, t- he, probably talked yeah, about a lot of that first input this sorry yeah yeah yeah, yeah he literally ahead. said 
in his own words, I have like written proof of this. He and he texted it me to me. That way I could show it to her if she was feeling skeptical. He literally said that I could go as far with her as either of us felt comfortable with on our own. Okay. Well, I mean, that's his rule. Um, his yeah. expectation should have been saying at some point, I would like to have a threesome. That should have been in the conversation if that's what he was going for, I think. Yeah. Eventually. Not, not Maybe he's hoping after a while. You know, you do it two or three times. You're like, hey, I want to thank you. I don't know. Guys think dumb things. Everybody thinks dumb things, especially whenever their libido's in high gear. Um, but back to your yeah. point, what, what should your next step be? I like the idea yeah, of you guys exactly. taking a fight break for a week. I don't think you should get sexually or emotionally Here's involved with thing. anybody for that week. I don't really think we're fighting right now. I apologize to him, and we kind of resolved it. I just have mixed feelings about like my ability to do stuff with other women and my lack thereof. I just, I don't know. I said a lot of horrible things to him and I feel like a big part of it would be trying to resolve that because yeah. I said a lot of stuff I didn't mean. And I feel like I really hurt him when I did that. Is that something? And you... I just don't want to hurt him with my feelings anymore. So I, I feel like I need space to resolve those, I guess you could say. Yeah. Are you, do you typically, uh, when you argue, do you often do this sort of thing? Not necessarily with him, but have you done this sort of where you say a lot of things you regret later? Here's the thing. I really haven't had that many fights with him in particular that I could draw that from. Or even, like, with my past relationships, I don't usually say stuff, like, out of pocket, like I did there. Like, okay. just purely emotional. So this was very, or fairly out of character for you, or very out of character for you to do this. Yeah. I would I say I think so. that's a good thing, right? You, you can come from a point of, I've never acted that way before. Uh, I, you guys, you've talked about it. You, you say you're not fighting anymore, but I still think... There's the you have a feeling about what happened that you might still need to get out and say, I never want that to happen with us again. Um, and then talk about how you're feeling like, hey, this new world opened of women and I really want to explore it. Uh, and I don't want to I, I do. I don't get the sense that you want to break up with your boyfriend either. No, I really so, love him like a would, lot. I what would your future yeah. a year from now look like with him and another woman? Living yeah. See, that's the unsustainable part of it. I, I just have no idea what it would be like that far out. I think the other part of it is that I'm kind of just riding off of my emotions and sure. how I'm feeling in the now. Yeah. I mean, you had big stuff happen. <laughs> like it's. Yeah. I mean, big stuff, good and bad, all within what, 24 hours? Uh, I would say this entire scenario has been ongoing for like a week now okay um yeah i would go actually to about two weeks so yeah it's been a pretty hectic two weeks basically um if i had to give you a time scale i started developing feelings for the girl about three weeks ago we made out two weeks ago and i've been kind of dealing with like the awkwardness and the fallout of that for the past two weeks Okay. Yeah. Um, another question I have is, how do you feel about him sleeping with another woman? Honestly, I am not opposed to it necessarily. Uh, but I don't know. Like, That's I would have thing. to approve the woman, I guess. That sure, would be sure, my one absolutely. stipulation. Because that was it, like the rule we established before we started doing any of this. Okay. Well, here's a thought, and this is not the kind of advice you're going to hear on a conventional talk show. Have you got, I, w I would look into swinging. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm not saying to participate, but the idea can possibly work with the way you want to explore. And it would bring another couple into your lives where you both have to approve of them um, and like them both. And you have to like her and you have to trust, you know, all the things going on. Uh, because there are a lot of swingers that just swing so the women can hook up. And those women can become best friends and even love each other and have very long and, and fulfilling relationships while still having a primary partner, which is kind of what it sounds like you want to have the primary partner, 
but you do also want to explore that other part of you. And swinging yeah. might be a way to get there, but again, it's going to be something you have to do the research on. You have to make sure you're okay with whatever level of interaction he can have with the female. There are soft swap couples where only the women kind of hook up and the guys only uh, uh, enjoy their own partner. Um, that way yeah, he's see, not actually th touching other women, but you are. Yeah. Like I'm by he's straight. So. Yeah. And that's a thing where we, if you didn't even want it, it wasn't okay for him to be with the other man's wife that there are couples that swing that way where just the women enjoy each other while the guys enjoy their women, their own, you know, I hate the possessive as though they, he owns you or something, but you know, his partner uh, would be the only person yeah. he's allowed to enjoy. And there are people that have modified that rules like oral only or touching's okay. Um, there are things you can do within the swinger lifestyle where you can possibly, and, and I don't mean this negatively, have your cake and eat it too. Uh, and then you could further find out what those feelings are that you enjoy with women and kind of refine what you're looking for. And at any time, here's the one piece of advice uh, I give uh, potential swingers or swingers a lot of advice. Both of you have to have the ability to say no at any point to anything or any couple. Both of you have the power to say no. I don't like his attitude. I don't like her perfume. We're all naked in the same bed and I don't want to do it now. I say no, it ends right there. So you both have complete power over what's going to happen. Uh, and that's really important. And it'll hopefully stop fights before they get started because you know your partner's there and even work on silent signals to say no or I want to back out. Um, that might be an answer. I'm not saying it is, but it's something to consider if you really want to keep this man in your life and still want to explore because I think going off on your own and especially developing uh, emotions or, or playing with people you have emotions for can act a lot of chaos to what's going on already. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Honestly, I appreciate your advice with that. Um, um, yeah, I, I'm I definitely almost gonna fear think saying that, that to people. More. Yeah, swinging doesn't fix relationships. Like, I want to say that, but it can oh, no. help you live your fantasies within a relationship. Like, the, he is the healthiest relationship I've ever been in. I think that's a, the reason we felt so comfortable doing this in the first place. Because, yeah, like, we rarely ever fight. We get along so well. Like, we were friends for two years before we ended up dating each other. Oh, so, awesome. yeah, we have a very close connection with each other. Uh, yeah. Well, I say go talk about, you know, what you're feeling and then maybe bring that up. One thing that can be fun, and, and I think normal non-swinging couples should do this at least once, find a local swing club. Go to the swing club, but you both can't do anything that night. You can't even take your clothes off. You just sit in the bar area, and you see what goes on. And at the very least, I bet you have fantastic sex that night. Um, but you at least get to see what the, all those other people are like, and you could ask questions of those people and say, what was your first time like? What are your rules? Uh, we're, we're considering it. And you'll get to talk and get some more information firsthand, and you'll be in a sexually charged environment that I guarantee that night would be amazing. And there is no rules that say you have to get naked or participate in a swing club. You could literally just go pay the door fee and, and go enjoy talking to people just like a bar. Well, okay. It's just, it's a thing. Like if people are interested at all, just go and look, but make that rule your first visit, nothing happens and stick to it. Trust me, no matter how attractive that girl in the corner is or how much she wants you just say, if we come back, absolutely. Yes. But that first night, yeah. just make it a visit. The other thing is that I feel like because I was so harsh to him, I won't be able to bring up the idea of this for a while. Take your time. Timing, timing is important. Uh, make sure your wounds are healed before you take another step. Um, you know, make you know the bandages are on, and you know, like how you interacted and why, and what you can do to avoid that the big blow up later. But yeah, I mean, you want to heal yeah. first, and that's why I'm okay with that week off but don't take a don't break up and don't date someone else just if you have to take a break just to think that's okay um, but I don't mean break up if you need to just a break from communication um, and then so, just make yeah, sure you revisit saying, before you get involved okay. with the next step okay so you're saying that I if we do take the break I shouldn't do anything with anyone else and it should just be to like locate my feelings essentially. Absolutely. Yeah. Think about what happened and why and where it went. And don't necessarily even, you know, don't reach out. I mean, every night say goodnight, I love you, or whatever you want, that sort of thing. But don't say, I'm thinking this. What are your thoughts? Like just sit on it for a couple of days, 
write it down in a journal, whatever you do to, to organize your thoughts. And then uh, at the end of, you know, a couple of days just say, okay, I've processed it. Let's talk. Um, you know, like, and make sure that it's a good thing. Like I am not breaking up with you. I am not punishing you. I just think we both need to just think about what happened because it's a big deal. And then let's talk like adults. Yeah. But you don't okay. want to add any romance or sex right now. You want to put a pause button on everything besides him because he's a priority. You, 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 that's clear. So put the pause on and make fixing that relationship your priority now. And then address your needs as you, you know, after a couple of days when you've all reached a new level of confidence in each other. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, well, I really appreciate you talking to me. Thank you so much for your help. Um, Thank you for trusting yeah, us. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Listen, it was great talking to you. And I want you like, give me a couple, give me a week off, give me a couple of days, but let me know that you're doing okay. Uh, I don't like to just hang up and never hear back. Uh, if I helped, it can help me help others down the road with the advice I gave you. And if you need more advice, you need to talk, please, please reach out. Um, I, I okay, am actually the person on Reddit who responds. So um, thank you again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll definitely keep you updated with what happens there. But yeah, you're absolutely right. He is the priority and I should definitely not be doing anything with anyone else during yes. that time period absolutely make him number one and then make fixing it the, the next priority and then after that consider your options and like i said if if you do go the swing or anything explore look learn ask questions uh ask questions in the swinger groups not the swinger pickup groups like how did you get involved what are the pluses what are the negatives uh if if anything more than fucking swingers love to talk okay well, great. Yeah, I will definitely bring that up to him. Um, thank you so much again. Uh, good luck with your talk show, by the way. Hey, thanks uh, a lot. Hope you have a good rest of your night. I, I, I thank you very much, and I hope you have a, a wonderful and productive uh, next week. I'm going to just skip the Sunday because uh, for me, it's Sunday and a half an hour. So thank you. Yeah. Have, have, see ya.